your old gaming PC has a problem, and it's called 2023. The latest batch of game releases are all super demanding, especially on the graphics card, so you might be thinking about swapping out your tired old GPU for something a bit more up to date. Well, not so fast. Your old first gen Ryzen could be an anchor weighing down on a new GPU's performance, especially if that GPU is made by Nvidia. <laughs> <laughs> now hold on a second, what's this AMD shill talking about? How much did Lisa Sue pay me to write this? Neither Team Red nor Team Green have enough bad products to warrant writing them off altogether, but neither of them's worth debasing yourself for either. There are very few situations in which I say it's not wise to buy an Nvidia, but that doesn't mean there are none. A couple of years back, Hardware Unboxed made a lot of people very unhappy when they published a video about something called driver overhead. Put simply, this means that Nvidia's graphics drivers use the CPU more than AMD's do. All graphics cards have the potential to be held back if the CPU can't keep up, and Nvidia's more processor intensive drivers mean their graphics cards are just more susceptible to this. However, modern CPUs with high core counts, clock speeds and IPC should have more than enough power to drive modern GPUs. It's not impossible to create a CPU limited setup from new parts in 2023, but it's pretty difficult and if you are planning on pairing a $600 RTX 4070 with a $50 Celeron, you probably need to watch some build guides. Of course, plenty of people aren't in the market for a whole new system, and buying a new GPU to revitalise an old PC has always been a perfectly cromulent strategy in the past. However, that was before the rise of the new APIs. Games built around DX12 and Vulkan can and will leverage CPU performance far more than older games did, meaning that even a powerful older CPU could act as a bottleneck for today's GPUs. In those situations, a Radeon could outperform a GeForce, even one that has more overall processing power. To illustrate this, I've been testing an 8-core 16-thread Ryzen 7 1700 from 2017 with a pair of relatively modern GPUs, the GeForce RTX 3070 from 2020 and the Radeon RX 6700 from 2021. In absolute terms, the GeForce is the higher-end model, and when paired with a modern CPU, should deliver approximately 20-30% to more FPS than the Radeon. The Ryzen 1700, however, is no spring chicken. It's lacking in clock speeds and per clock performance in comparison to even lower end chips in the 2020s, so we should expect to see both cards being limited by the CPU in non-RT rendering. To give the Ryzen the best chance I can, I've overclocked it to 3.8GHz and installed 32GB of dual rank dual channel DDR4, clocked to 3000CL15. This isn't an absolute best case scenario, but is as good as my particular CPU and RAM could get. When I tested the Ryzen 1700 for its own dedicated review, Spider-Man Remastered was running at about 85 FPS on average, using the RTX 3070 without ray tracing enabled. Absent any other context, you'd probably call that a playable enough frame rate, but more modern CPUs can drive the same graphics card to deliver more than 50% higher frame rates. So anything more powerful than a GTX 1660 Ti would probably be a waste. Switching over to the Radeon, the game can now run at 100 FPS on average without any other hardware or settings changes. The RX 6700 is still overkill at these settings, and you could pretty much disable the upscaling and get nearly the same frame rate. Neither GPU is operating at 100% still, but now the frame rates are virtually tied. Both GPUs are capable of significantly higher frame rates at these settings, but there's no getting around the CPU limitation this time. When testing with the RTX 3070, I usually do three passes in Cyberpunk 2077. The first one of these, 1440 Ultra with quality upscaling, is very nearly GPU bound on the RX 6700, meaning both cards can deliver a 60-ish experience, but could potentially deliver more, 
To get around this and see just what the limits of the Ryzen 1700 are, I tried again with the medium preset and balanced upscaling. The RTX 3070 barely changes, so 59 FPS on average seems to be about as good as the Ryzen 1700 gets in this title, at least with Nvidia. There's a small bump in switching over to the RX 6700, up to 64 FPS, but the GPU is still not being fully utilised. Meanwhile, my usual RT setup for Cyberpunk is very much GPU limited by the RX 6700. I could drop other settings to try and make it more playable with RT enabled, but there doesn't seem to be much point when I could just turn RT off. I suspect that Red Dead Redemption 2 just performs better on Intel than AMD. I've been looking at my CPU test results for the last few months lately, and it seems like a pretty consistent thread that the old Haswell and Broadwell e-chips have better, more consistent frame rates than even modern Ryzen's, so it's entirely possible that someone running an i7 from 2017 could have a way better experience than the Ryzen 1700 here. Unfortunately, I don't have one anymore to confirm this, but I've still gathered some useful numbers. The RTX 3070 is stuck at below 60 FPS, making for an extremely disappointing time. Again, I'm pretty sure an older GTX card could probably give the same results as the RTX here. Meanwhile, the Radeon actually nearly ends up GPU limited. It jumps to 76 FPS on average, and while there's a fair amount of stutter, it's still a much better result than the GeForce gave. There's a less noticeable performance bump in The Witcher 3, but it's still very welcome. The 3070 again drops below the 60 average when trotting through the streets of Novigrad. The Radeon does manage to creep over the 60 average, more than 10% higher than the Nvidia card managed at the same settings. Flight Simulator's results were a little disappointing, both GPUs were CPU limited and to a roughly similar extent. The 3070 could manage a 40 FPS average, whereas the RX 6700 only extends that to about 43 FPS. I tried to keep a consistent route for both runs, but it's possible that this variation is more to do with slight differences in what's being rendered, rather than which hardware is doing the rendering. The game is capable of much higher frame rates with other CPUs, so I suspect the driver overhead simply doesn't matter much here. The last of the DX12 tests is The Last of Us Part 1. I saved it till now because it's somewhat bewildering. Whereas the RTX 3070 was being held back by the CPU, it was at least making an effort and could produce a playable enough 60 FPS. The Radeon was so underused it felt like it was dropping into a low power state. Even manually bumping up the minimum clock speeds and power limit in the Radeon driver software had no effect, and the game averaged just 40 FPS. Could this be a bug? Quite probably yes. TLOU's PC port is rather notorious for being badly optimised, and until recently was reserving 20% of VRAM for the operating system, so it clearly wasn't ever optimised for running on older systems. Next I want to look at a couple of counter examples, both the RTX 3070 and RX 6700 are being limited to about 230 FPS in Valorant, a DirectX 11 powered esports title that can reach much higher frame rates on newer CPUs. Of course it's faintly ridiculous to be complaining about results in excess of most monitor refresh rates, but it's all about perspective, an overclocked i5 from 2014 can do better. Fortnite likewise is CPU limited when testing in performance mode, and because this mode renders using DX11, both the GeForce and Radeon score about the same. The Radeon did score remarkably better 1% and 0.1% lows, which could be attributed to driver overhead, but could also be the standard variability we come to expect in Battle Royale games. 
Overall, then, it's possible for a first-gen Ryzen, like the Ryzen 1700, to see between a 5 and 35% increase in performance by pairing it with an AMD Radeon rather than an Nvidia GeForce. Nvidia's driver overhead is clearly a thing, and something that owners of older CPUs should be aware of. But it's also something that can be avoided by upgrading the CPU. Owners of AM4-based systems using 1st and 2nd gen Ryzen's can make a relatively cheap upgrade to a 5000 series and make driver overhead essentially a non-issue. Before I wrap up, I wanted to compare the results from the Ryzen 7 1700 with those from the Ryzen 5 5600X I tested a few weeks ago. This CPU is a 6-core 12-thread Zen 3 model with a larger 32MB L3 cache, a clock speed of up to 4.65GHz, and is paired with RAM that is… well, it's, it's the same stuff, but the 5600X can run it at 3600CL16 without any fuss. Returning to Spider-Man, the difference is staggering. The RX 6700 can break past 130 FPS, and the 3070 can almost hit 140 in standard rasterized rendering. As mentioned before, the RX 6700 is the limiting factor when running Cyberpunk at 1440 Ultra with quality upscaling, but the RTX 3070 can leverage the extra CPU power to hit 76 FPS on average. With RT enabled, the situation is largely the same, just with smaller numbers. The Radeon still struggles to hit 30 FPS, while the GeForce can manage almost 60, more than 25% faster than the Zen 1 chip would allow. The reduced settings run, meanwhile, sees both GPUs soaring above 90 FPS, with the 3070 almost hitting 100. Upgrading the CPU is only somewhat justified in RDR2. The Radeon gains in 1% and 0.1% for a slightly smoother experience, but averages hardly move at all. Meanwhile, the RTX 3070 overcomes its shyness and finally shows up, blasting past the Radeon 2 in excess of 85 FPS. Again, that scene is repeated for the 3070 in The Witcher 3, with averages leaping from an underwhelming 56 to almost 90. The Radeon also sees a benefit to the tune of 25% higher averages. Flight Sim sees the Ryzen 5600X and 1700 delivering similar performance on both the GeForce and Radeon. The difference this time is just how good that performance is. Averages are now up from the low 40s to the low 70s on both cards. There's a pretty big jump in The Last of Us for both cards too. The GeForce gains about 35% from the new CPU over the Ryzen 1700, hitting 89 FPS, and with mostly solid 1% and 0.1% lows to boot. The Radeon finally wakes up from its low power mode and also reaches into the 80s, averaging 85. Valorant, as we've established before, loves big caches and high clocks, and the 5600X can certainly deliver on both fronts. The RX 6700 almost doubles in frame rate, averaging 400 FPS, whereas the RTX 3070 reaches 550. Ridiculous, really. Fortnite is proportionately even more ridiculous. The Radeon can reach more than 50% more FPS thanks to the CPU upgrade, reaching over 300, whereas the GeForce more than doubles its performance to over 400 FPS. <laughs> because of course you need 400 FPS. D don't be silly, who doesn't need that many frames in Fortnite? So, the real conclusion, my bottom line on driver overhead. If you're stuck with an old PC you can't afford to upgrade fully with a dead-end CPU socket, then the AMD benefit is real. In some games you can see real benefits from getting a newer Radeon card over a similar or even higher performing GeForce. It's not universal though, and it's not consistent, so some games won't see a big improvement at all, and some heavy ray tracing titles will be a bad time regardless. On the other hand, if you do buy a modern 200-400pound to RX 6000 or 7000 series Radeon for your first gen Ryzen, Haswell i7 or similar, that old CPU is still most likely going to hold back your new graphics card, even if it does perform better than an equivalent Nvidia would. If you can afford it, and are able to, 
you should consider splitting your budget so that you can upgrade both your CPU and GPU so that you can ignore the driver overhead issue altogether and don't end up feeling tied to one particular brand of graphics card. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.